Yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, today, as part of the documented uh, dialogue series of com uh, Collective for Women Philosophers in India, we have with us Professor Mohini Mulk. Uh, she's a well-known woman philosopher based in India. She taught philosophy at Delhi University and later at IIT Kanpur. She earned PhD degrees in Western epistemology from Lucknow University and in model logic from Manchester University as a Commonwealth scholar. Later, she was awarded the Homi Bhava Fellowship for research in the methodology of social sciences. She has held many fellowships across the world, especially at the London School of Economics and published vociferously in internationally acclaimed journals, such as The Mind, Journal of Indian Philosophy, Social Scientist, Sophia, JICPR, etc., etc. She has two books to her credit, an edited volume titled Understanding Social Reality, Goals and Approach, another co-edited volume under the title Classical Indian Thought and the English Language was an outcome of a disillusionment with the manner in which Indian thought and society has been studied and projected in the university system. The volume explores the categories relating to some key areas of Indian classical thought through the well-established lexicons available in English, the language of power. So welcome, Professor Mohini Mulk, and it's to have you here to, uh, to have these documented dialogues with women philosophers. We at CWPI, as I told you, intend to recognize and address the gender gap, if there is any within the Indian philosophical domain. Today's conversation with you, I hope, is going to be a step forward in that direction. And I hope at the end, we are all enlightened through this brief virtual uh, conversation. So uh, let, me, let, me, let me ask you, uh, let me begin uh, this interview formally or in conversation formally by asking you, can you share your journey as a scholar and professor of philosophy with us? How was it and how do you look at it? Oh, well, that's a very large question and uh, we have very little time. Yeah. So um, I'd like to go to the, your, your central question, which is how have I, what, what have been my experiences as a yeah. woman philosopher? Yeah. I think that is your major interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and as I told you in our uh, conversation earlier in our correspondence, I've never seen myself as a woman philosopher. And therefore I will probably disappoint you on the whole, yeah, yeah. because uh, my journey uh, and my career, my journey in philosophy and my career in the various institutions that I have worked in <clears throat> has uh, never, uh, never focused on the fact that I was a woman. I do want to make a distinction, though, between career and vocation. Okay. So, um, and I should correct myself because my vocation has been philosophy. I think for um, ever since I was an undergraduate student in the Lucknow University. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so, whereas my career may have been affected by the fact that I was a woman, uh, and uh, especially as I worked for most of my career. In, at the IIT, yeah. and you know that the IITs are really male institutions. And um, <clears throat> so um, there may have been some resistance to, uh, to my progress, uh, you know, in, in, in my career in IIT, but I never felt any handicap in being a woman. Now I have to say that honestly, and I've never seen myself as such. Okay. So given that your experience has not been one where, where uh, the difference, the gender difference of you being a woman came in way, although there has been an impact of this on your career, uh, there's a claim that uh, philosophy like other disciplines uh, such as uh, sciences, 
remains male dominated as a discipline, irrespective of our experiences. How do you conceive this claim as, as a philosopher or a woman philosopher based in India? How do I see this? Yeah. Well, I, you know, you've answered your own question. There's nothing unique about philosophy. Okay. I mean, uh, in, in, all, um, in all the disciplines, all the disciplines are male dominated, have been male dominated. And uh, uh, not only science and philosophy, but literature, art. I mean, re really, uh, women have not made that kind of impact through the history of civilization. Civilizations, I would say. Okay. And so I don't think that we should uh, concentrate on what's the problem with being a woman philosopher. Okay. In fact, you, there's one of your questions and I'd like to deal with that right now. Okay. Uh, because I felt rather strongly about even the posing of the question mm -hmm. that uh, well, whether philosophy is seen as a conceptual discipline, mm -hmm. a discipline uh, dealing with conceptual analysis mm -hmm. because of its male stream. <laughs> Character. Uh, yes. And uh, I think that's uh, if you don't mind my saying, I don't know who, which one of you posed that question, but I think there's something self-defeating about the question itself, mm -hmm. because there's something in the question that suggests that if philosophy was not dominated by men, then somehow it would have taken, uh, could have taken another course, which was not conceptual analysis, something more concrete, maybe more material, and uh, I, I think uh, uh, there, you know, um, I, I see this as a self-defeating question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're already saying that women would have done something differently. So you're not saying merely that women have not participated or not been given recognition and so mm -hmm. on, but uh, there's a difference between the way in which women, women would do philosophy and the way in which philosophy is being done. So you're damning philosophy as such okay. in, in raising this question. I feel very strongly about it and I reject the question, leave alone try to answer it. Yeah, no, because, let me let me let me reframe the question. Maybe the language, because of because of uh, being uh, being uh, uh, a bit uh, like uh, short, and because because of the yes, context. yes, oh, all right. Is is it that when you say that philosophy is a discipline which which deals with conceptual analysis or which deals with abstract conceptualization, yes, and you don't see women philosophers getting recognition even if they have done work. Is it that there is a connection that has been made in the discipline's history between conceptualization and between being man, being a man and being able to conceptualize? Is it that conceptualization is somehow connected to being a man, the way uh, the discipline has articulated itself, the way the discipline has evolved and developed? No, I mean, I, I'm not even understanding, following the question, because you are wanting to abolish all differences. But you, the question that you are asking is uh, suggesting that because men were dominant in philosophy, in science, and in, in everything, let us, mm -hmm. let us admit it, therefore, it took on a certain nature, a certain texture. No, 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 not, not because of that. Because men have been dominant, so uh, like it, it, it became uh, as if automatically identified with that. Well, then if so many things are identified, not yeah. to a conceptual analysis in the case of philosophy, but logic for, for that matter, rational thinking. Mm -hmm. or a scientific investigation. All mm -hmm. these things you may ask, raise the same question about. Yeah, yeah. And would you, would you raise the same question about that science is science because it has been done by men? I mean, the nature of science is 
today what it is, because it's been done by men, women would have done science differently. Where is the connection? No, I, I really it's think... not about women would have done it differently. It's... Okay, then. Yeah, it's, it's... Then, then, but then if, if women would not have done it differently, then why are you associating this with the fact that men have dominated these areas? We're associating this. I'm associating this with the fact that men have, the moment men started doing it, hmm. automatically, maybe to, to, to hold the foot, it became a sort of exclusionary for women. Like it automatically took the take tag. No, exclusionary. Let women may not be able to conceptualize. That is the reason there are no, no space here. So, so you're saying the same thing. You're not, uh, I think I'm not making my point very well, that in order to exclude women, yeah. men made this a conceptual activity, yeah. Yeah. which itself implies that women are not capable of conceptual activity. Or, or which, which leads to the claim, which leads to the claim that has often been repeated. Well, in that case, you know that uh, this um, uh, this may be so. This may be the claim in philosophy, but then there are all kinds of claims in in the various other disciplines that there are uh, different kinds of human activity. As yeah. I said, you know, logical thinking, the whole of logical thinking. You know, women are illogical, they're emotional, they're this, that, and the other. I don't buy any of this. Yeah, and uh, but, nice. but again, that men may say, well, women can't do logic. Well, this- You were, you were well, yourself your professor logic. of modern logic. This woman did logic yeah. and was appointed in IIT Kanpur to teach logic yeah. to a lot of male students. I have, I have, I have read, read an experience of your student uh, uh, when he wrote um, an assignment and he, he, he went to the library, picked up a book, uh, a journal article, went through the theorem and thought that he will um, just reproduce it in a way. So then you uh, didn't tell him that uh, you have just copy pasted. You oh. called him to your office and told him that you can go and read exactly the same uh, um, uh, article that he had um, uh, copied it from. So he said that, that that showed me the scholarship uh, that that you had in logic. Um, so in fact, like uh, you being a, a professor of logic, you being a philosopher who dealt with logic, says a lot about the claim and uh, is in itself a counterclaim to that. But the claim that, that, that uh, philosophy is uh, uh, to be done by men and philosophy is a male, uh, discip male oriented discipline or mainstream discipline has led, uh, led to women being almost ousted from the uh, uh, curriculums that are uh, standard in many universities. So since philosophers are a rare breed in the celibi, that, that we go through, that we come across um, uh, in universities. How did your engagement with women philosophers begin? And no, I, um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Muzaffar, I'm disappointing you because I'm not being able to give you the kinds of answers. No, no, you can, you can. No, no, can. no, no I have to be honest. Uh, you yeah. are raising questions and I'm being honest. It never, never struck me. It may have once in a way, struck me when I found a good uh, woman philosopher of science, for instance, like Nancy Cartwright. And, uh, and, and, and of course, I knew some good women philosophers in England when I was there, when I yeah. did my, uh, 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 my second PhD there. Uh, but uh, beyond that, it never occurred to me to raise specific questions regarding women and philosophy. Okay. We are all aware that the history of human scholarship, thought, whatever you want to call it, um, is bereft of great women. Yeah. I mean, whenever we find one, you know, Maitre or something in, in our, we make so much of it, you know, that we had girls, 
what 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 was the name was it gayatri also or maitri well, maitri no maitri of course um maitri yeah it was of, by the way maitri the wife of maitreya so this is this is really more indicative you know you should be raising historical questions about why this is the case uh, rather than you know that we simply um as it were <laughs> uh, uh castigating men that's that's no it's not it's not about casting no, okay no i i would yes, draw that i would draw yeah. that but the to answer your question truthfully no it's never been a factor in my own thinking and uh, never been an impediment for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in publishing as mm -hmm. far as i know yeah yeah okay so uh, uh, coming back to uh, what what you just said that uh, there, there is there, there, there is a, a, a kind of dearth there is a kind of lack of great women uh, scholars in every discipline and as well as philosophy and you yourself have never thought of this question uh, yes. looking into uh, the relationship between women and philosophy do you think that it is time now that we should we should deal with such questions or do you it can only be deal with these uh, questions at all yeah uh, it can only be very hypothetical and even contrafactual because either you would have to uh, be able to dig out those yeah. women women thinkers who produce a lot of work Yeah. but their work lies buried yeah in some old musty libraries or it didn't even get to a library you'd have to you'd have to dig out such uh people mm -hmm. who did not get their fair share of recognition mm -hmm. and i i would not want to dare you but do you have such examples yeah we 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 don't only have such examples from okay. the pure philosophical tradition we have examples from the uh, way contemporary philosophy is operating let me just give you a simple yes. uh, straight away example yes i'm uh, and that was that was that was what i was coming down to oh yeah i i, I have never uh, come across uh, the book um, and it has not been recommended to me you were hmm. uh classical indian thought and the english language although it it deals with debates which are central to contemporary indian philosophy right now okay uh, uh i have i have i have gone through works by sharad desh pande i have gone through works by nalini bhushan j garfield and others but here next door i have a women philosopher who has worked on this particular area so it's not just merely producing work it's recognition of that work so mm -hmm. women around who are doing work but not getting enough recognition so the, uh, the producing that work and the distance for it to be getting recognized like the, the well, uh, act. and we're still we're, we're still uh, uh, like looking at it staring at it so that's one of the reasons that we thought that it has to be some sort of an effort to to let uh, the viewers know that we have women philosophers and women philosophers have, mm -hmm. they have they have they have done some tremendous work in their own fields uh can i respond to this yeah 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 uh, incidentally i have an article in charat desh pandey's uh, book yeah, yeah, the yeah. philosophy in colonial india yeah, yeah, you yeah. may have seen it yeah, yeah, i so. have also written it's some something of a rejoinder um on uh, on uh, an article published by garfield and the lady whoever she is nalini nalini bhushan nalini bhushan uh, which is called which was entitled pandits and professors i don't yeah, know if you, yeah, you yeah. know that article yeah it's it's in jicpr it's philosophy in english from renaissance, uh, renaissance to independence yes yes and i um, have criticized them yep. in that so um, i mean uh, i can talk about that subject but today clearly we're not talking about that subject now i think them you know that you're pointing out that my book has not been uh, recommended etc etc uh i'll tell you one thing uh, muzaffar 
Uh, and uh, this, I think, has very little to do with my being a woman, though it may have something. You have to be ambitious. You have to push. You, you have to push. And, and in India, maybe even more so. Mm -hmm. You have to belong to a circle of uh, academics who will push your work. Mm -hmm. Now, I have never been ambitious. That may have been a failing. Um, more than one person has told me, yes, why did you not compile your articles? Why did you not do this? Why did you not do that? And I have not done that. That is true. So I think it's really more of a matter of um, having that as an ambition, mm -hmm. you know, to be recognized. Mm -hmm. I have to confess, and this is the absolute truth, that I would have been delighted to be recognized, but I would not shake a leg or I would not really lift a finger in order to, you know, go somewhere and say, well, this, this is my book, etc. I mean, I, I just don't, I just did not have that kind of career ambition. Yeah. I was happy to be researching in the area that I was doing. And that seminar of which the proceedings uh, you're referring to, yeah. it was a great seminar. Um, anyway, uh, that, now th that's an autobiographical statement, which mm -hmm. is, you may think it has something to do with my being a woman. I don't think so. I, I think I'm just, I was just not that inclined. I was not a careerist. Yeah, no. I was not a career. Yeah, see what what you are what you are uh, uh, like uh, you're putting the blame on yourself, while as I uh, as part of this yes. team, want to look at other sources for this blame, like the discipline itself and the the, the discipline's particular orientation itself. I, I'll give an example. Uh, the, uh, the book uh, uh, titled Indian, the edited volume titled Indian Philosophy uh, in English from uh, Renaissance to Independence, it has around 49 um, Indian uh, pr uh, professors or Indian philosophers, so to say, in it, and none of them is women. So that does not tell you so what's that, uh, uh, career orange or not. That, that, that tells you Garfield? something about how the discipline picks up. Is that a Garfield volume? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the. Uh... You know, there aren't all that many women, but they didn't invite me. Uh, so that's because I'm not, uh, actually the truth is I'm not even aware of this volume. I must look it up. And, um, it, but I, I think they're very too. wrong headed. Yes, yeah, show it to me, but I'll uh, go, go to Amazon. Um, it's, it's here somewhere. Yeah. So this is it. This came in 2011, uh, four years before your book. Okay. Uh, this is visible. Okay. I've... But it has none of none of the uh, is is by a woman here. Uh, yes. Well, you know, um, I I can't speak for them, but I can speak about them. Yeah. I think they're very wrong-headed, Garfield and Bhushan they're barking up the wrong tree. Uh, but uh, that's neither here nor there. That's an academic uh, opinion. And uh, maybe four years earlier, I had already written my article on what they, on their article on pundits and professors. Professors, which is the introduction to this. Which, which, uh, which really has a great deal to be said against it. And I, I could give you a lecture on that. Uh, I mean, I'd have to prepare it, but um, so, uh, you know, that this is what I was trying to indicate, that um, it's really comfortable to be part of a group. Then you are echoing certain ideas that belong to the group and the members of the group support each other. They read each other, they invite each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've never been part of a group, and if, uh, so I mean, uh, I uh, what what shall I say? Except that that's the way I am, and uh, 
I have been happy to be a student of philosophy rather than uh, um, rather than be a specialist. You know, if, if you notice, or maybe you have- But you are a specialist. It's, 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 it's- No, no. Um, well, I certainly don't like to think of myself as a jack of all trades and master of none. No, that's not what I'm saying. But the, you may find this of interest. I need to share this with you uh, because you are talking to me and uh, and putting me in a larger context of women philosophers. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's all right. I mean, you may have a point which I can't see. But my, if you notice, uh, Muzaffar, hmm. I started out, I'll quickly tell you because we run out of time. Mm -hmm. So ran up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was <laughs> okay. Um, I started out with Western epistemology. Okay. I mean, uh, you know, I, my, my first thing was on Russell and Air and Sense Data or Kya or Kya. And then I moved to logic. Why? I mean, I could have stayed with epistemology. I could have done epistemology all my life. I could have written tomes on epistemology. But I w felt the lack of the knowledge in symbolic logic. Mm -hmm. At that time in India, I'm talking about the 50s, there was no one here to teach, no one who knew symbolic logic. Mm -hmm. The only logic that we were taught was Aristotelian, the classical syllogism. I don't know what whether you've learned any logic in Pune, you must have. Um, I don't know who, who it was. One of my students is Routh. Did you know Routh? Yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. I, that's... Uh, and so I wanted to, to not to be ignorant of this okay. field. So I happily switched. switched. It's not such a huge switch, but when you come to the research level, it is a switch. Either you're doing epistemology or you're, or doing, you're doing modal logic. You're not, uh, you know, there's, there's an interface between them. Then I did modal logic. And I came back and I taught it for a long time. And then I joined an institute of science and technology. And I used my logic and whatever training I had in philosophy, which was very good training. Mm -hmm. Dhaka University Department was a top department at that time. And um, I did work in the area of methodology because that was closest to logic. Mm -hmm. And I did many courses and some, and I wrote as well on scientific method mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm not a physicist or any other kind of pure scientist. So the kind of philosophy of science that I could do was methodology. And okay. I made some contribution. I mean, I did write and, and that, and then I felt well, the sciences that I can really contribute to yeah, are the social sciences. Mm -hmm. Even raising the question about science itself regarding society. And is there such a thing as social science? These became questions that began to interest me. That is how I took this ICSSR uh, fellowship. fellowship. I, I was given it. And I spent a summer in the London School of Economics and where there was philosophy and the social sciences. You know, Karl Popper had uh, retired, you know the name of Popper. Yeah, yeah. And, and so on. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you, I don't want to go into the whole history, but the fact is that I have been happy to pursue the question that is staring me in the face. Yes. And it can be a question regarding the very area in which I'm working. Mm -hmm. So then I did the philosophy of the social sciences and that brought me to the study of society. And when I came to the study of society, I realized Muzaffar, how different were the categories that if we using. wanted to study our own society. Yeah. yeah. And that is how in the last decade of my career, 
I said, I am not going to die ignorant of Indian thought. Yeah. Talk about Western philosophy, Indian philosophy. What is this Indian philosophy? I did some courses in, in, in Lucknow University and then left it to, to the side. By the way, if you're talking about uh, women um, philosophers of India, Shuruma Das Gupta, I don't know if you know the name, she taught me and she was a first rate philosopher. She uh, was the wife of the big Das Gupta who's written the history of Indian philosophy. Okay. SN Das Gupta. SN Das Gupta. She was his wife. He was in Lucknow. Okay. Okay. And, yeah. So, so I mean, what I'm trying to tell you <laughs> is uh, that I've come a long way from yeah. Western ep epistemology and uh, uh, Russell and A.J. Eyre and logical positivism to Mimamsa today. Yeah. Okay. Th that's that's where my uh, next question is going okay. to that uh, at your work. Your work, classical Indian thought and the English yes. language. It, it, I did some it's about theater. it's yeah. about uh, that dilemma. So, uh, what what made you write this book, and and what are you trying to deal with? Which is the problem? I thought the problem is staring should be staring everyone in the face. Yeah. But maybe you are not dealing with it because you are not looking at. Indian systems of thought. You told me in in one of your mails that you yeah. you've worked on Habermas. So yeah. I mean, uh, so um, maybe you're still no. I work in contemporary Indian philosophy as well. So okay. Your... Well, uh, you know what is cont I will uh, I will interview you next time and ask you what is contemporary. Yeah, definitely, Indian definitely, definitely. Yeah. We'll have we'll I have a chat about that. that. Yeah, yeah. Because so, that is the problem. Contemporary Indian philosophy is the big question mark, yeah. rather than uh, a, a an established topic. field. Yes, yes. So, uh, and I, I can't expand on this uh, unless you have no other questions. Then I could expand. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, let, let's finish uh, the other smaller questions and then come 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 back to it. Right. So. Um, uh, you you were you just told us uh, uh, about some women philosophers, or although you are not at that point of time concerned with this question of no. being a woman. Even now, even now, no, we're yes. influenced you. Can you just tell us a few names? Uh, uh, offhand, I mean, Shuruma Das Gupta comes to mind, and um, uh, I can't really. I mean, I know of women philosophers because they were my co colleagues. Yeah. But who was outstanding, uh, you know, I don't want to simply mention a, a catalog of names. Yeah. I mean, after all, I taught in, uh, in Delhi University, there were women philosophers. There were uh, really not many, there was no woman philosopher in Kanpur IIT uh, other than me. So okay. I, you'd have to give me time to think. Okay, so... Uh... How do you think, like you had your contemporary women philosophers, how do you think they helped shape the, the progress of uh, Indian Philosophical Academy? No, they didn't. They, so uh, according to you, they didn't. Why no, do I mean, I, I don't think there's any progress has been made by men or by women. Okay. You, yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about contemporary Indian philosophy, right? No, I'm talking about the, 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 the progress of philosophy in India, not, not, not just the... the pro, I mean, this whole question needs to be defaced. Okay. We have to ask ourselves whether we have philosophy in India. Okay. What is it that we have in India? That is the question that is raised by, in this book. Mm-hmm. In this book, Dharma Shastra. Okay, yeah, I, 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 uh, you, you had sent me that that article of yours on Dharma. Yes, yeah. but that, of course, is not about philosophy mm -hmm. so much as the problem again. Mm -hmm. Well, it's. Uh, <laughs> I really can't even begin to talk about that, you know. But it is. I thought it's very relevant to the predicament that India is in today. Mm -hmm. The India of the constitution 
Mm -hmm. And the India of what shall I call it? Of of the Indian dharma traditions. Okay, so uh, there is. I mean, that's a very large question I've raised, yeah. which no one needs to answer right now. So, given the fact that there definitely is a gender gap within uh, philosophy departments in India, like it is, uh -huh. like for example, you were only you. Uh, that is true. At IIT right now, here at our department, we only have one woman professor. How do you think that uh, there can be a way out of this gender gap, at least career-wise, to begin with? Hmm. Since I haven't done any thinking on this subject, I think it would be hypocritical of me to start uh, giving you an answer, try to give you an answer right now. I can think about it. Okay. I mean, I would take your uh, point of view, maybe I should take it more seriously, but you okay. know, I have not thought about <laughs> okay, why, so... how, why aren't there more women philosophers? Yeah, yeah, it's, I fine. Think, it's uh, fine. Everybody is struggling for a job. So what is the reason? I mean, uh, so uh, I, I don't have the answer. Yeah, so you have been, you have been, uh, uh, doing and practicing philosophy uh, yes. as as both both as a carrier and both as a scholar of philosophy for for uh, so i guess three three or more than three decades now would you like to share uh, or uh, a, a, an article or a book uh, that that has influenced your career and you want uh, the contemporary young scholars or the students of philosophy to read or even a few of them uh, no, I cannot share one book. Yeah. Because as uh, you know, as my journey progressed, I found myself staring at questions, new questions. And at every stage of the game, there would have been some book or the other. Yeah, you can share many. You can share more than one. Well, if you don't mind, I won't share them right now because uh, nothing is hitting me in the, uh, uh, well, not, nothing is hitting me in the consciousness straight away. I mean, I would only be wasting time. If you had asked me this question earlier, I would have thought of which are those books which have okay. the instance, yes. Okay. Um, even the, you know, I please remember, Muzaffar, yeah. uh, I am 86 years old now, yeah, yeah, yeah. nearer to 87. My okay. memory is not quite as agile as okay. it might have been when I was 60. Yeah. So when you say, which are those books, you have, you're talking to an old woman who would have to sit back and think, how ye kaun si Yeah. Okay? So the debate that is central to your work, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, your, your edited volume, Indian philosophy, yes. Indian classical Indian thought yes. and yes. language. So what are the debates which are central to this work? What is the problem? That, yeah, uh, what's the problem? This is, this is, this is now we have time, we have around debate. 10 minutes. Yes, there are problems. And we only have to look at our own colonial history yeah. to, to identify the problem. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there is uh, perhaps in this article, or maybe it's in another, I've written about the start of the university education how it displaced the indigenous ways of, of learning. And mm -hmm. by the way, uh, I should make it very clear that a lot that I might say might suggest to you, oh, she is one of those uh, traditionalists who wants to go back and, you know, the, and do everything in uh, Patshalas and uh, all that. That's not, that's not the okay. case. I want to make that clear, that my interest in the tradition, and I would like to repeat this, my interest in the so-called philosophical tradition, remember that the word philosophy is a Greek word. It's the lover of wisdom. Okay. It's, it is, you know, it's a Greek word. Did we have uh, did we have that kind of a tradition? Were we asking the kinds of questions 
that were asked by the philosophers of, I mean, I'm not going back into ancient Greece, that have been asked in the Western tradition, or were we asking a different set of questions? Were we asking, who am I? Rather than, uh, you know, how shall I know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the basic question that you ask, that the civilization asks, that determines the answer that it gets. Now, just to jump to the modern period, when we started doing our academic work in the English language, you know, the, the British mm -hmm. set up the, the, the universities. The first university was Calcutta University. Mm -hmm. Cal Calcutta was the capital. Are you aware of that? And yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the that. first one was the Presidency College, in fact. Yeah. Then they not only did they insist that they want, but it, they, it was educated Indians, the educated Bengalis of Calcutta that insisted on Western style of learning in the English language, they insisted on the English language. And that is how we started um, all, all education in the English language. And hence, whatever there was in Indian traditional thought had to be put into the English language. Mm -hmm. And the closest uh, uh, counterpart, should you say, or of course, people won't say it's a counterpart, they say, of course, Indians were doing philosophy, just the way the, uh, the Westerners were doing it, and so on. And, you know, I'd like to leave out the Greeks, because we have a lot in common with the Greeks. Um, but not afterwards, not afterwards. And um, Whereas the Western tradition evolved in a certain manner and it developed a kind of philosophy and many, many schools of thought, that's a different thing, but the, the, it, it developed something that can be, is recognized as philosophy in the West. You have to ask yourself the question, was such questions being asked here Mm -hmm. for, for instance, take the Cartesian question. Just take the Cartesian question, the question of doubt. I'm not saying that nobody ever asked that question, but you have to look at what were the major questions that the Indian tradition raised and then say, well, if that is Indian philosophy, then you have to really transfer a whole lot of concepts and uh, theories. Uh, in fact, I no theories. There are no theories. Concepts and find their counterparts, the, the translated uh, equivalents in the English language. In doing so, you are distorting the original thought. That is my argument. Yeah, so uh, uh, Professor Mulk, these questions are fundamental to uh, debates in philosophy right now. And that's why Indian philosophy the departments are in such a mess. So these are fundamental uh, 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 debates, even in intercultural theory, uh, in intercultural studies, and, and, and uh, other allied departments. So uh, we, are, we are running short of time. Yes. I, I thank you very much for at least accepting uh, our invite. Uh, and I thank you on behalf of the Collective for Women Philosophy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank we, you. Have, we, have, we have had some differences within this interview, but at the baseline, both of us, both of us agree that there are not women or great women philosophers around. Okay, gives us a hope that somehow uh, at the bottom of this argument, we both share a common concern. Maybe uh, uh, when it develops into uh, into an argument, the mind would be a much more general. There are differences, yes, yes. but but somehow both of us agree on that part. And yes. at uh, the Collective for Women Philosophers in India, want to bring in more women philosophers uh, to the fore, talk about their works, and 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 try to 
at least relive their experiences within the corridors of law school departments and higher educational institutions. Thank you very much. I wish you all success in this endeavor. And thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you. Was, thank you. Very uh, much. It was great fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.